Hello guys! Hi! <laughs> so today is going to be me, the one who hosts the episode. And it's going to be a really interesting one because we brought here today one of our beloved teachers, Bruna. Hi! <laughs> She's been with us for like, how long? Almost five years, maybe? I think so, yeah. Like more than half the time this school has been working. And... Uh, it's going to be really fun because we're going to be focusing on vocabulary related to love. <laughs> <laughs> and we're going to be using this podcast, especially for St. Valentine's Day. But guys, if you watch us or listen to us throughout the whole year, uh, don't worry because this vocabulary is going to come in handy. We promise that to for you. For sure. It's always time for love, right? It doesn't yeah. have to be Valentine's Day, yeah. right? So, you know, don't worry if you are currently lovesick. Eventually, things will uh, pan out for the good and for the better. So, just pay attention <laughs> to the whole episode. There are plenty of vocabulary and expression related to love. <laughs> okay, so now, the first thing we're going to be focusing on is going to be this first step, which is basically when we are alone, we are solo, okay? So we're going to be giving some vocabulary related to this part and episode of our life. All right. And eventually we will move on, I don't know, to dating, getting to know someone. And um, yeah, perhaps we'll turn into marriage and uh, even divorce. <laughs> so <laughs> follow us through the whole journey. Yeah. Okay, so um, I know that... Um, You've been back in the game for some time now? Yes. <laughs> and let me tell you, it is scary. <laughs> oh, is it? <laughs> a little bit. Especially because I had been in a relationship for such a long time. It's difficult to just go back to being solo, like you said. Um, there are so many things that you just, I don't know, kind of forget how to to navigate through life just being your own person. And okay. So like... You mean like certain habits that you kind of lost because you were hooked into a different... Exactly. And I think that that's a very important part of life that, I mean, it's great if you are, if you have it when you're young, <laughs> but it's great to have it at any moment in life, you know, to just learn how to do things for yourself. And I definitely, think yeah. You know, but it's funny because... Uh, we're talking about this, yet I do know plenty of people who are, you know, like terrified of being footloose. And I've always appreciated really much this independence that being, you know, fancy free footloose brings about. Yeah. And uh, yet there are so many of us who kind of need someone else in their life to... Yeah. I think it's um, fun that it's the both of us talking about <laughs> it because we are so different when it comes to like facing life because you had been... You have been, um, I don't know, you're, we're always more woke to that, like doing things and yeah. trying things and, and, I don't know, experimenting with life. And I think I was always on the more safe side, being with someone, doing things with someone. So, Well, I wouldn't say you're th like that anymore. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and it's really character building. I think it's important, like you said, to be full loose, to just try things and to experiment and to know... Uh, what floats your boat? If you don't have that time for yourself, then you don't. Yeah, so. definitely. Now, there might be that danger of ending up a lone wolf. wolf you yeah. know, it's like some of us might end up thinking that, you know, I'm so comfortable the way I am. And Perhaps you kind of lose that spark that you kind of need when you want to go back into the game. Well, that's true. That's true. I think it's um, complicated in because you you can get very used to being by yourself and to doing things on your own. Um, and it can be scary to let people back into your life. Yeah. But I have to say I'm a very cheesy person. I love, <laughs> I love the all of the lovey-dovey things. And, you know, like I like being in a relationship. I like being with people. And not just a um, romantic relationship, but also with friends. I think I am a very, like I like sharing moments with people. So even though it's scary, I think it's, I am more scared of being alone. 
<laughs> than being with someone. So okay, yeah, but I think it, it might stem from our nature. There is a kind of a pack uh, mindset rooted in our brain. You know, we're still animals. We need to be in a group. Uh, we need to socialize, even though at first some of us might not be the you know the social butterflies. Yeah, there's still something within us that makes us you know like really long for being with someone and you know i think that like nowadays there is this huge culture of being independent which is obviously necessary you have to know how to go about life on your own terms but we are social beings i think it's detrimental right. to just carry on with this idea that you have to be alone mm -hmm. you know it's like you don't have to be alone you have to be content being who you are yeah but you can have people and you can have right yeah 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 it's funny it's it, it, you kind of encounter both things right mm -hmm. like overly sociable and uh, we were saying you know social butterfly really active as well on applications <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh my god, the application. <laughs> I used to remember, you know, when, uh, right now I'm uh, I'm in a relationship, but I I remember that I was so when you're when you're alone, you kind of, you know, open all the possibilities out there. Yeah. But then there are also these kind of other people who are just uh, like really uh, lone wolves, you know, they don't want to they are utterly, you know, I believe you end up being far too picky. Oh, yes. But, you know, I think that can happen even with people that are really sociable. Um, I think the longer you're single, the pickier you become. Yeah. Because it, you get used to doing things your own way and it's um, compromising is the number one thing for being in a relationship. So I think that with time you kind of lose that sense of like, I am not always going to get things my way. You yeah, know? right. And you may end up, you know, sometimes believing that you you might be out of many people's league. Oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> look I'm at just, her. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's just that, yeah, for sure. You think, but that's a healthy thing. Um, obviously, not to be too peaky as in like nobody's good for you, but to have your standards and to know like this is what I deserve. I'm not going to settle for less. Yeah. That's super important. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And you you kind of learn many of those things being on your own. Definitely, yes. Hmm. Okay, so we've seen vocabulary like to go solo or to fly. There is some vocabulary like to fly solo dolo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to write solo dolo. So for how long you've been writing solo dolo now? Ooh, um, for more than a year, I think, or almost a year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool. And it's been a roller coaster. It's been <laughs> fun. I mean, I think that everyone faces those things in a different way. Like I had a really difficult breakup yeah. last year, this in the beginning of the year. So mm -hmm. um people deal with things in different ways. To me, it was like, let's go out, let's meet people. <laughs> I want to be in all the applications because I need to meet someone that's going to make me feel happy. Which is a mistake, but it's also well, fun. Well, I mean, it's what you kind of felt, you yeah. know. I mean, it 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 also depends on how that relationship had been going for a long yeah, time. That's true. So yeah. So I was, I mean, in all of the applications you can imagine, <laughs> I went on a lot of dates. <laughs> Unfortunately, more first dates than. <laughs> second date. Have you ever been on a blind date? I haven't. I, I think, I mean, do people even go on blind dates anymore? I, I, sometimes I do hear about that from others, but I think it's not that common. Yeah. Because like, it's not anymore. I mean, with social media, you can just go on Instagram and check the person before you go on the blind <laughs> yeah, date. Sure. You, know? <laughs> like, you know who that person is. Exactly. Before. So I would definitely go on like a setup date, like yeah. my friend it tells me about this person and yeah sure let's go out but a blind blind date i'm not sure would you go on a blind date oh uh, well i guess i would i mean had i been alone or single and ready to mingle i mm -hmm. guess i i would uh, but just for the the fun of it 
I see. Because, yeah. <laughs> as you said, I had been alone, like single, uh, for two years and a half before becoming an item with my current boyfriend. And um, I did have some really awkward dates, <laughs> but they eventually turned out into some um, interesting and funny stories, you know? So perhaps I would regard the blind date as a, you yeah. know, a, a, an interesting story to, to tell later. Yeah, an opportunity. I see, I see. Yeah, that sounds cool as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the market like? I mean, there are plenty of fish in the sea apparently, uh, but is that true? Are there that many fish in the sea uh, for someone who is actively, uh, you know, seeking they... for a decent fish. Yeah. Not sure. <laughs> <laughs> no. So I do, I do think that, I mean, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of funny because it's so controversial because you have so many options and because you have so many options, it becomes difficult to, I don't know, I feel like people have more um, struggle more nowadays to connect because it's like, ah, I can always find someone better. Why should I just, you know? I guess that it's easier to say, you know, thank you, next, and uh, Adriana Grande <laughs> yes. song, right? And, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But but I do think that, I mean, I like, I, I like to believe in people. So. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe that there are like, very decent men out there. I have met very few of them. <laughs> I believe they are there somewhere. <laughs> and um, do you believe that, uh, okay, this is a thing that I kept hearing for a long time and I kind of applied in my case, like when you least expect it, that's when it happens. Oh, yes. I think it's true. Um, I mean, it is, um, I don't know, maybe pivotal for you to know what you want from life. And if being in a relationship is something that you want from life, great, you should know that you want that. But to be actively seeking for that perfect partner, it's not going to happen. I think yeah. that's, you know. Oh, it might happen, but perhaps not that. Yeah, because I think that part of, um, I don't know, the dating world is losing your expectations. Mm -hmm. So if you are... Um, very focused on finding that one perfect man or the one perfect girl, you might miss on things that you would really like on people just because they are not fitting into that box. Yeah. So that's why I think it happens when you're not expecting it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I could be right. I remember I had, well, I had been, in my case, after the former breakup that I had, I had been lovesick for like ages. I think it was like 10 months and I couldn't even, I, I couldn't even uh, picture myself dating someone else because I don't know, I was like really heartbroken. <laughs> and, but eventually, and I remember that I would think, I was so convinced that I would end up alone. It's not because, it, mostly because I wouldn't come across someone who was kind of similar to me and it was funny because out of the blue, you, you, you happen to encounter someone and it's funny as well that it proved to be one of the best matches that I had, mainly because I give a chance to someone who wouldn't fit those, you know, <laughs> like ideas I had in my mind beforehand, because I would kind of date the same kind of individuals yeah. until I met this other guy and it's like, I was actually scared at first to go on a date with him because he wouldn't fit within my, you know, like yeah, yeah. idea of what a guy would be like, like a perfect ideal guy for a relationship with me. And I'm so happy that I, that you I went took on that, that step. Yeah. And you met your significant order on <laughs> applications, right? Yeah, I so did. Yeah, yeah. So that they work some people <laughs> yeah we're not making any advertisement on specific <laughs> applications but they do work yeah <laughs> and i don't know i've been on some interesting dates on like from the and you know for me i think i'm giving away too much of my personality but... <laughs> go ahead this is a, just the thing to you know to talk about our stuff low <laughs> steam and yeah yeah so i think that for me um it's I 
really easily um, can realize when someone is interested in someone else. That definitely doesn't happen for me. Like I, I can never tell if a person is interested in me or not. So from the applications, you kind of already lose that, you know, like am I stepping on eggshells? Because you already know that that person is interested on yeah. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I think that that's, for me, is the thing that makes me a little bit more at ease when I am starting to see someone because I already know that they're attracted to me, they find me hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of like one worry away, you know? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, like if it were in a casual situation, you would have had more doubts, right? Like. Yeah, and I think I, I have many times, like looking back at my life now, that I am a more confident person. I think that there have been many times that I just blew off people because I didn't realize that there was something there. Okay. So I just friend zoned them without mm. giving them a chance because I didn't really realize there was, you know, a, I, a, a sparkle. So they might have thought you were a player. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Would you consider yourself a player? I don't think I am. I think I am. Um, Maybe. <laughs> no, it's just that, like I said, it's really difficult for me to tell. So I think I am way flirtier when I think there's nothing. Okay. So maybe I can come across as a player for people, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't know. I th- so, yeah. so the gist is to have low expectations. I think so, yeah. Okay, not not to expect too much, so eventually things will turn out, like, interestingly. Yeah, and you know, it's like, it's supposed to be fun. I think sometimes people face it like a job application. You have to meet all of those... No, you're, like, meeting people. And even if it's... My best friend is a failed date. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, we went on a date. It was awful. I mean, for him, it wasn't awful, but we definitely were going to work out. You didn't hit it off, like on the romantic uh, side of of it. Yeah, so, and then, and now he's my, like, my wingman, so. Oh, that's really cool. (laughs) Yeah. That's really cool. And uh, what else? Um, Do you believe in love at first sight? No. I mean, I don't know. I think that you can be extremely attracted to someone and you can even I don't know like go into the Lululand (laughs) at first sight (laughs) but love is a thing that comes with really knowing someone so how can you like love someone at first sight yeah Uh, there might be different kinds of love apparently like the first one which is mostly based on chemistry and attraction which uh, does the drug that we are carried about, carried away with, you know, like when your head over heels in love with someone, I guess it's mostly that part, you know, like the first year and a half, two years, two years and a half, the, uh, the more, the most. Yeah. yeah. And then perhaps real love is, as you said, once you get to actually know someone and the other part of the relationship, which usually is with the, with the, Pros and cons. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I mean, I, I don't know in your experience, but for me, I, I think that's why I'm so like, no. Because um, there are so many different areas where you have to match with a person for it to be even, I don't know, a, a chance. Mm-hmm. So like you have to like them physically, emotionally. They have to like spark something in you rationally as well so it's really difficult to to get all of that from the same person at the the first moment sometimes like you need to insist a little bit on some aspects (laughs) so yeah yeah well I completely see I try with you on this Hmm. Hmm. okay when was the last time you (laughs) ogled someone or you you drooled (laughs) over somebody um not very long ago, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. I met this guy. It was really fun. I was with friends. We were, like, um, hanging out. And then I look across the room. There's this smoking hot man. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're friends, so I don't drool over him anymore. But, yeah, not long ago. <laughs> so friends or friend-zoned? I think I've been friend-zoned. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I okay. learned not to drool over him. No, I'm joking. It's just, I don't know. I think, I mean, alcohol can make people look more interesting than they yeah, are. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, but yeah, I think it was not that long ago. What about you? Do you still, like... Uh, mostly actors, I will say. Mm. Oh, that's a good question. What's an actor that you find like, wow? Well, like, if I guess the the most smoking hot guy right now would be um, Henry Cavill. Oh yes, I mean the guy he's from Superman. Handsome. Yeah, yeah, he's far too handsome. Yeah, like too handsome, too perfect, too symmetrical. But he's pretty gut looking. Yeah. Yeah, but he looks like he's a womanizer, doesn't he? Yeah, but I think he's not. He's such a nerd, you know. He <laughs> maybe I don't know. You know, he he's has like this look that kind of. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't know. Yeah, we couldn't. I wish I knew. For me, <laughs> I mean, there are honestly many men I find attractive, <laughs> many actors, but I have this thing for Killian Murphy. Oh yeah! Oh, that guy's hot. Even though he has a kind of a weird uh, murderer look in his eyes i know <laughs> yeah i know but it's yeah i mean when he says tommy okay Shelby, definitely yeah. so picky blinders at mm -hmm. the top yeah 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 he's he's definitely really attractive so we settled for british guys apparently <laughs> <laughs> and accents accents is a thing that i find so hot I mean, it's super attractive to people that have different accents. I think it's also related to, like, I don't know, because people from different cultures are so interesting. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I have a thing for accents. So which would be the most appealing, appealing accent for you? Oof. Um, Aussie? <laughs> <laughs> I met an Aussie man this summer. Wow. But yeah, I think maybe, I mean, British for sure. Um, I also find Irish accent like super um, manly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's like this man could take care of me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's really manly. Irish and even uh, Scottish. Scottish as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then like from other places, I also find Italian super. Um, there is actually, I don't know if I should tell the story. <laughs> Go ahead, please. You know, these are the things we like the most. <laughs> I used to have, because before the pandemic, I used to teach here at the school. There was this group of students. We had general <laughs> English classes. You know where I'm going with this, right? Well, you're talking about students. So, uh, well, I don't remember whom you're referring to, honestly. Well, anyways, I had this student that was Italian. And honestly, I mean, I, th I am super professional when I am in <laughs> class. It's not like I am drooling yeah, over my students. Um, but... He was Italian, and I remember the one class we were having a conversation about accents, mm -hmm. and then he spoke Italian, and I just drilling, yeah, crumbled. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so obvious to the other girls in the room; they were all looking at me like, "Oh my God, Bruna!" <laughs> but well, yeah, yeah. But now there's no more danger like that. It's just online lessons. Yeah, online lessons, <laughs> so no dangers. And I think I have never been. Like I said, I am very professional. No. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so uh, I have different questions. Um, is there any best and worst way to break up with someone? Yes, I think there is a best and worst. I mean, best, there's never a best way to tell someone you're not in love with them. Yeah. Um, but the worst way would be... I mean, over the phone, you should never just break up with a person over the phone. Ghosting. Oh, I hate ghosting. Uh, and yeah. I mean, I know that like breakup refers to like an actual relationship. And I don't think that a person would just ghost a person they are in a real relationship with. But I think that we are normalizing not talking about things. And that's yeah. so awful. So I think the worst way would be to just just consider the other person, you know, like it's, you have, it's a difficult conversation, people are going to suffer, but you have to have the conversation. So I think the worst way is to not be sincere about things and to not explain to the other person what's happening, because then you are, we were there just wondering. Yeah, definitely. And I believe it's one of the most common place, uh, I don't know, like attitude, at least when up online dating 
Yes. I mean, if you're not, if you're just thinking about like situationships, <laughs> then ghosting is such a real thing. And I hate it. I think that even if you don't really have a relationship with someone, you you have to be decent. So if you don't want to talk to them, just tell them you don't want to talk to them. And Yeah, but you know, it actually depends on what period of your life you're in. Um, I'm not defending that, but I do have to admit that I kind of, when I was in my 20s, I kind of ghosted and I felt, you know, uh, after some years passed, I did feel bad about that. Of course, I've never talked to those people anymore, but I did feel that it was pretty unprofessional on my, from my, you know, <laughs> on my end to have behaved like that. But I guess it's also like a lack of resources of having no idea what to talk to or just lack of, I don't know, dignity. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not judging because obviously it has happened. Yeah. I can't be a hypocrite and say I have never ghosted anyone because I have. Um, but I don't know. I think you have to at least have some, you know, like where are we? Are we just if it's a person you've never met or a person you have only seen once, it's like kind of okay. Yeah. But yeah. Right. Okay. So um, I do have a question as for dating. One of the things that apparently, I mean, in my experience and all my girlfriends and boyfriends, like people I know uh, tell me when online dating is that there is a pretty good, a chance of getting this dating plateau online no not even dating is like talking to someone matching with them on the application and then there is a plateau when no one speaks you have no idea yeah. what else to say how do i put that it's like for how long should you keep texting this person and and that's because people don't meet in real life i don't understand like are you going to have a virtual relationship or are you going to have a relationship like why would you keep talking to someone for forever? You don't know how you feel about someone until you see them in real life. So to me, that makes zero sense to like be talking for a week. Cause you don't know the person enough to have a cool re like chat. So things just start to cool off yeah. and you lose timing. So girls and boys ask people out, <laughs> go on a date, have a beer or a coffee and then it's much more difficult for that to happen because you either going to say okay I'm not going to see this person anymore right. or it's going to be easier for you to know like what topics you're going to talk about or definitely I think one of the things that made at least uh, my boyfriend and I made it work it was the fact that we spoke for just a couple of days and then he just proposed to to meet and indeed, when you're with someone, in, you know, like uh, in front of the person, you get to know if you're actually attracted to that person, like firstly, physically and the vibe, if you hit it off with the person. Exactly. And uh, yeah. And if it doesn't, if you don't hit, up with the, uh, hit, it up, hit it off with the person, it may just end up in a really nice, you know, friendly uh, hangout. You just uh, have a beer with someone or a drink and that's it. Exactly. Yeah. And when it comes to hitting off, do you hit off on others? Do you expect the others to hit off, uh, hit on you? Sorry. Do you, if you hit on somebody, do you have a pickup line? <laughs> I mean, I don't. I, like I said before, I think I have to admit that I think I'm very flirty sometimes, but I am not the greatest with words, I think, when it comes to um, relationships or to people I'm attracted to. So I think it's more like visual. That's why I don't like just chatting because like at some point it's either going to be too much <laughs> and, or, you know, like you can't, I mean, it's just to slip away from regular texting to sexting <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's a good concept you know pretty common one in today's dating world okay cool so we've been talking about now the the dating and stuff now if we were to move 
towards something even more serious, like Gary, you know, you you, you get in a relationship with someone or uh, you make an item with someone, uh, you might end up getting married. So, okay, neither of us are married. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no longer married, but I've been married. You've been married. So, yeah. Okay, so there are some expressions in English for getting married. One of them is to get... Well, if you decide to actually get married, you take the plunge. Yeah. It's a pretty nice one. Or know? to tie the knot. You right? tie, tie the, the knot. knot. Uh, yeah. yeah. You get hitched. <laughs> yes. They're off the market. So Yeah, there are pretty there are pretty many expressions <laughs> as for uh wedding someone and uh, yeah. Um now what happens if that goes wrong? It can go to the dogs. <laughs> yeah, I mean for me it went south obviously because I am single now. So <laughs> um yeah, I mean you you never um, say yes to someone thinking that it's going to end, right? But if it does, then you just brush off the dust. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, you might not be aware of that, but there might be some deal breaker uh, some time during that uh, marriage when which actually decides whether to keep or not, right? So what's for you a deal breaker? Oh, that's a very good question. Um, I think for sure is not being respected as a person. And I mean, obviously, there are many levels to being respected. And I think that sometimes we put up with more than we should. Like um, being disrespected is not just, I don't know, having someone tell you off or even I know that it happens to some people that's like a really toxic or aggressive case, but not having your needs respected, not having, not being seen as who you are. I think that that's, that's my deal breaker. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's worth, it's not worth it to be with a person that doesn't really get the best of you, you know? Right. Yeah. So what would you say is your deal breaker? Well, I guess, you know, the funny thing is that we end up deciding on our deal breaker or, uh, as you say, something that causes you not to keep being with that person anymore. Um, kind of depends as well on the prior experiences we for had, sure, right? Sure. So you, you know your deal breaker once you've been through that. Yeah. So I guess in my case would be for the other one, for my partner, not to actually get to know themselves i talk as if i knew myself but i do know that i kind of knew more myself than he did and uh, by not knowing who you actually are you know like what your limits uh, are and uh, if you don't connect with yourself i think it's virtually impossible to actually connect with someone else and that's doomed for uh, you know for a failure i completely agree with you i mean it's impossible to go somewhere if you don't know where you're going. It's, it's right. So, yeah, if you don't know what you want out of life, you can't. I think that many times, and I speak by, for like, um, my God. Yeah. <laughs> I speak from experience mm-hmm. when I say that. Um, many times I just pushed my ideas, like, if this is what they want to do, then I'll go along with that. And it gets to a point where you can't make allowances anymore. Indeed. So if you don't know, like, this is what I want for my life, this is what I want for my partner, then it's really complicated. So I agree with you. Yeah, so that will be mostly it. We've yeah. been uh, talking about different processes of, uh, yeah, of love in the mm-hmm. end, yeah. in one's life. And we've been, as you have, Uh, observed so far if you're still with us that we've been using plenty of vocabulary and expressions now to make it simple for you we're going to leave a link to an article which uh, encompasses and encapsulates most of the vocabulary you have uh, heard uh, today and seen on the screen because if you watch us on on a video you would see you know the words popping out with their meaning 
And uh, guys, please, if uh, leave any comment if you like the episode. And Bruna, thank you very much for this really interesting. Oh, thank you. It was really <laughs> nice to be you. here. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully we can have even more episodes with you. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So bye-bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.